Man's Transformers 96 here with another review. This time we have an Iron Man 3 Assemblers review. And this is the two pack. It's the first, and I'm assuming, because I haven't seen any else uh, that's going to come out, it's the only two pack. It's a Toys R Us exclusive, and you get these two characters. This is pack number, I believe it says 18. Yes, it's pack number 18. And you get this character, which is unnamed. I've went through um, all the pictures of the armors, and I cannot identify one that looks similar to that, so I don't think that it was a part of the movie and then you also have Red Snapper. All right, so now let's go over the packaging. As you can see, here's the two pack, uh, two pack packaging. Looks pretty nice. You get a nice picture of the Mark 42. Uh, it's the same basic design, just larger. Uh, you can just see more armors in the back, which I think looks nice. You get uh, 50 plus armor combinations. And like I said, it's pack number 18. And on the back, you've got the um, Red Snapper with all of his interchangeable parts and then you get this random character which I really don't know who it is with all of his inter interchangeable parts he has a lot more of course so yes and then you know here's a little example of what you can do with the two characters so yeah so this is a good pack because I think although I hate and I everybody hates the whole assemblers um, idea and toy franchise you know because it's really just awful for toy collectors but this is good uh, for people that like this assemblers uh, set this is a great like gift because you want to get a kid, you know, two of them so that he can interchange them. And because uh, that's the whole point of this whole toy line. So a two pack really works for this type of toy. So yeah. So um, so let's just uh, let's start with the random armor, the blue and silver one. All right. So here's this character. So first, let's just get some more lighting. There you go. So here he is. So um. This is obviously the unnamed one. Uh, he is, he's a very dark blue. I like the blue. It's, it's pretty like metallic in the chest, which looks nice. And then it's, it's more flat in the arms and legs. But it's, it's a pretty seamless, uh, transition. So you really don't notice the different shine of paints, which is nice. So I do like the blue. It's done pretty well. The silver is really nice, very bright and everything. And I do like it. The only thing is there's just not that many uh, paint apps. I mean, the arms on the back look nice. And then you do have this part, which is silver, which is good and a little bit on the head. And then, uh, on the feet but you know this whole portion is just this one color and I mean there's a lot you know more silver parts and there might even be just some different shades of stuff like in the movie it's just it's so flat it's just such a such a cheap toy I mean it's really got that cheap look to it I do like that the the actual like um, eyes and everything are outlined in uh, in like a black although the color is very close to the original color of the suit so it's hard to tell but um but it's just it's just a little better than this like gold because these are essentially repaints of each other. Um, the gold doesn't have uh, the lines so that you can really tell the eyes and everything. I wish that this had those black lines as well. But yeah, so so these are just repaints of each other. So basically, you're buying this for that figure, but then you get this repainted one, and um, so yeah. So I do like the silver. The the metallic light blue for the arc reactor looks really nice. And overall it's fairly decent. It's got uh, holes on the legs as well as on the arms. Um, so yeah, so this this is really just uh, not a good toy because it's a character that's not in the movie very much at all. It's just a repaint of a normal Iron Man suit. And it's just, uh, it's the paint color scheme is cool. It's just, it's not done very well. I mean, you get large portions of these one colors and then you get large portions of the other color it's not uh, mixed tastefully you know it's not mixed re uh, uh, realistic looking it's just it looks like a cheap little toy um, but that's what this thing is and the whole point is to ch are interchange it with these parts these are the parts that are specifically meant to go along with this armor and then the uh, the red snapper has some others um, yeah so I finally said red snapper there you go so yeah so what you can do is you can like pull out his arms which are fairly easy and like replace it for like a huge chainsaw or this huge Thing. I wish that the blue in in these arms were the same blue as the body because then that would actually make it look like it it fit and uh, you can like remove the leg and like take a take a, somebody else's leg and it doesn't have to be this guy because I know this guy's a repaint of him but it doesn't even have to be a repaint you can just use I think you can use just anybody's leg because they all have the same pegs no matter who I mean, you can, you can use the red snapper's leg and put it on him. So, yeah. So, do some, you know, just kooky, crazy little combinations. I'm just going for the most outlandish thing I can do here. I kind of like the rockets on this arm, I have to say. Just the way that it goes on, it looks like it fits. 
I don't know. I like the arc the rockets there. So yeah. So I mean, you can just go crazy with this thing. This is a neat gimmick for kids. I think that they're definitely going to have a lot of fun making some crazy armors with this. But for collectors, it's just horrible. And uh, the, you know, don't blame Hasbro 100%. It's definitely Hasbro's fault, but it's also like Toys R Us's fault. Um, because these uh, toy stores like Toys R Us, Walmart, and Target, what they want right now and what they're requesting from the toy companies is that they make toys that are are um, are fairly cheap that uh, you know parents can buy for their kids and uh, just to you know shut them up when they're screaming for a toy or something but the thing that doesn't fit with this is this is the same price this is a ten dollar toy uh, the same price is for a Marvel Universe so you really can't blame the uh, the um, you can really only blame the toy company here because it's not like they were doing they were making this cheap version and have it uh, you know cheaper they made this uh, you know bad version and uh, request the same amount of money for it as a regular good Marvel Universe or like Thor 2 figure so that is definitely a shame but you can do a whole bunch of different crazy uh, uh, things this also plugs into the back just so you can see and yeah you, the gun sticking up this is a really cool purple I will say it's a very dark purple which looks nice but I wish that this like rotated up or something but you can unplug it uh, obviously so yeah so, I uh, really don't like this one. I mean, it's just a repaint, and it's it's a fairly bad repaint. I like the color choices. I just don't like the way that they're uh, put together. So, overall, really not liking this figure. All right, now to talk about the... Red Snapper. So here he is. So as you can see, this is uh, the Red Snapper, of course, like Robert Downey Jr. has been telling you throughout this review. Um, but uh, this is this is the figure that I definitely wanted. Uh, the Red Snapper is definitely one that was in the movie, of course, which is nice. And it's unfortunately it's pretty unique with these um, with these uh, assemblers figures. A lot of the figures that they're doing didn't show up in the movie at all. They have a couple ones like the Star Boost armor that was in the movie, and they've got they've got a few others. But for the most part, the armors that they have come out with aren't in the movie, but this so happens to be one that is in the movie, uh, which is why I definitely wanted to get this one, especially since it's a really unique looking character, so that's why I wanted it. So overall, just to go over the figure first, as you can see, the paint is is good, it's it's movie accurate, I mean, you've got the red, the silver, and the, and the gray. The only thing is, it's not painted very well. The arms, I like, I can live with the arms, I don't have any problem with the way that it's painted in the arms. The chest is very limited, I mean, You've got mostly red with just like a splotch of silver. There should be some more silver like up in here too. And I wish that there was like a, a you know, just better painted. I mean, there's just nothing in here. It's just they really missed out on a lot of good paint apps that could be done. Same thing with these legs. I mean, all these little spots should be, have like silver and stuff, but they just don't. The feet are fairly nice. I like the way that they're painted, silver and red. And then the back does have a little bit of paint apps, but I wish there's some more. There should be some more silver up here and stuff like that. So yeah, the head sculpt overall pretty nice it's it's a very unique uh head sculpt which is uh just you know good for the red snapper um i had to go through many of these because there was just a whole bunch on the shelves so i really got my pick and i picked one with the best eye paint color that's what i recommend looking at the eyes because some of them were a bit skewed and stuff so look at that the arc reactor again another odd shape um is really nicely done and very accurate to the movie so overall i really do like it um so of course i mean i, I just forgot to talk about the articulation on him Everybody knows the articulation on these figures is just terrible. You got ball hinged shoulders, ball jointed head, and swivel waist. And that is one of the main reasons everybody hates this toy line, including myself. Just the horrible articulation. You really can't go for any dynamic or cool poses with this. Uh, so yes, yeah, so that's a shame. So here's the stuff that he comes with. Uh, you've got these arms, which are very similar. Well, I mean, sorry. They're the same thing that comes with, uh, that comes with like the Mark 42. And I think that there's one or two other figures figures that come with these arms. But yeah, this this can go in. I actually, this doesn't look too bad. This actually kind of looks neat. The red matches, so it actually looks like it could possibly, uh, you know, fit. This this actually might be the way this armor was designed. So I do really like that. And then what they do have are these big gimmick claws. Now, one thing that I'm actually impressed with, and I shouldn't be impressed with, though, is that I would have expected Hasbro to come out with this figure and to just give you these claws. So I am pretty happy that they gave us normal, movie-accurate, non-gimmicking claws uh, as well, because I would have really expected them to come out with just these claws and call it a day, but they didn't, which is nice. Um, 
This can shoot a missile, of course. As you can see, it's closed. And what this does, it's actually, it's a pretty neat idea for a gimmick. When you push, push down the button, it opens the claw and the thing fires, and it fires really good. And if you don't want it to shoot, you can just use this as a little, as a little claw-like toy, you know, to like pick up stuff. This, oops, I'm pretty sure again. But yeah, so uh, so it's a nice, it's it's a fun gimmick for kids. I don't mind this at all because they gave collectors and people who want a more movie accurate one. They gave us the right claws. So then giving the kids some goofy claws as well is perfectly fine with me. I, I'm fine if they compromise between kids and collectors. It's when they just go for, you know, one side, you know, kids and uh, and don't give the collectors anything. Or I can even see it uh, just going for collectors and not giving the kids anything. There's problems with both of those. But they really need to learn how to compromise and give us both what we want, which they seem to have done with uh, the Thor 2 toy line. I think that that's fun for kids and it's great for collectors. Overall though, this red snapper is pretty okay if you want just a standard uh, red snapper in your collection because there really isn't any other figures to any other red snappers that you can choose from at the moment. I know Play, um, Play Imaginative, I think is the name, and uh, and um, and Hot Toys is doing, of course, Red Snapper, but that's for people who can't afford that. This is a, you know, it's a fairly nice substitute just to have something in your collection. Here's a little size comparison. With this, with the blue guy, he's in great scale because, I mean, he's as tall as the others. With Red Snapper, he's too short. He, uh, the Red Snapper is bulky, which is nice, but he's just too short to go with the others. Um, so, I am, uh... I am pretty disappointed with the size, but overall it's a decent representation of the character. Um, I would not recommend buying this set for this guy. If, if you are a big Red Snapper fan, you want a Red Snapper, then go with this one. If not, uh, just skip this pack. So there you go. So overall, a, uh, a decent, I'm going to just say decent, assemb for assemblers, it's decent. It's a decent toy if you consider everything with the assemblers toy line. As, a f as figures compared to regular toy lines, it's horrible and just awful. So yeah, so there you go. So that's the Iron Man 3 assemblers review of this blue guy and the Red Snapper.